In 2023, speaking the truth can be a dangerous occupation. There's a well-defined playbook of denial, obfuscation and distraction to demonize the truth teller and attempt to weaken the impact of their message. That's what we're seeing now with the reaction to Fitch downgrading the creditworthiness of Uncle Sam from triple A to AA+. It might sound like a school report card, but those three characters are backed up by masses of detail that's simply too powerful to ignore. The person directly in the firing line for this criticism is former Fed Chief, now Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen. Her response has been predictable. I strongly disagree with Fitch Rating's decision. The change is arbitrary and based on outdated data. Also implicated in the downgrade is former Treasury Secretary Larry Summers, who called the downgrade bizarre and inept, while in his opinion, America's economy looks stronger than expected. So having asked these turkeys what they think of Christmas, let's delve a bit deeper into why Fitch has now matched S&P's 2011 downgrade, leaving only Moody's of the opinion that America still deserves its AAA rating. Fitch say that the downgrade reflects both a steady deterioration in governance standards over the last 20 years, as well as the expected fiscal deterioration of the coming three years. So the culprits are the administrations of presidents Biden, Trump, Obama, and Bush. It seems like, just as in Britain, a, a uniparty approach to government means that neither side can be relied on to exercise some fiscal prudence. It's just spend, spend, spend to buy votes and try to stay in office for a few more years. Let me quote directly from the Fitch report. The repeated debt limit political standoffs and last minute resolutions have eroded confidence in fiscal management. In addition, the government lacks a medium term fiscal framework, unlike most peers, and has a complex budgeting process. These factors, along with several economic shocks, as well as tax cuts and new spending initiatives, have contributed to successive debt increases over the last decade. Additionally, there has been only limited progress in tackling medium-term challenges related to rising Social Security and Medicare costs due to an aging population. So the overall narrative is a long-term loss of confidence in governments of any stripe to get on top of unaffordable spending plans or to even have an outline plan for how to bring things under control in the years ahead. Unlike the hysterical reactions from those whose job is to be on top of these things, Fitch has plenty of data to back up its concerns. The combination of new spending initiatives, a lower tax take and higher interest costs mean that the overall federal deficit will almost double from 3.7% of GDP last year to 6.3% this year. That's a deficit of $1.46 trillion, more than the annual GDP of Vietnam, the Netherlands, or Argentina. The much-touted spending cuts agreed during the brinksmanship of the debt ceiling negotiations will amount to just 0.3% of GDP next year and 0.4% in 2025. There are no other cuts on the horizon. This barely compensates for the forecast widening of the deficit to 6.6% next year and 6.9% in 2025, driven by poor GDP growth and ever increasing costs of servicing the debt burden. One of the key measures Fitch uses to assess the creditworthiness of a country is the interest to revenue ratio. In other words, how much they're receiving in taxation versus how much they're paying on all the debt they've accumulated over the years. For a typical triple A rated country, this ratio would be just 1%, while for an AA plus country, the average would be around 2.8%. 
By the time Sleepy Joe's spending plans take effect in 2025, the American interest to revenue ratio will be a whopping 10%. That is 10 times where it should be as a triple A country and nearly four times worse than even the new reduced rating would suggest. Fitch is simply pointing out that the king has no clothes and is being pilloried for this observation. America's debt to GDP ratio is projected to reach 118.4% by 2025, which is two and a half times higher than the AAA median of 39.3% of GDP and well over double the AA plus median of 44.7%. Fitch expects to see the debt to GDP ratio continue to rise and fears that the US will suffer higher vulnerability to any future economic shocks. Interest costs are expected to double in the next 10 years, while 2033 will see the Social Security Fund run out of cash just before the Hospital Insurance Trust also goes the same way. The report recognizes the structural strengths that underpin the United States, including its large, advanced, well-diversified, high-income economy supported by a dynamic business environment. And, at least for the time being, the role of the US dollar as the world's reserve currency gives the government extraordinary financing flexibility, which I guess is analysts speak for, turn the printing presses up to 11, Janet. Given what's been going on with Donald Trump and Hunter Biden, I couldn't resist a smile when I read the section of the Fitch report that states, the US has a high World Bank governance indicator ranking at 79, reflecting its well-established rights for participation in the political process, strong institutional capacity, effective rule of law, and a low level of corruption. Oh, really? Compared to the S&P downgrade in 2011, market reaction this time around has been muted. But then the message of the Fitch report feels more aimed at the White House than Wall Street. But there will be consequences because this adds a slightly higher risk to US Treasury bonds, which should mean they need to offer a higher rate of interest as compensation. And as UK households and businesses are discovering, Rising rates come with a world of pain after a decade and a half of free money. At least the Fed has paused its rate rises, which is more than can be said for the lamentable Bank of England. UK company failures are already up 40% year on year, and even a 10-year-old knows that there's a 9 to 18-month lag between rates being raised and the full impact being felt in the real economy. There are now 11 countries with higher rated debt than the US, including Australia, Canada, Denmark, Germany, Sweden, Switzerland, Norway, and Hong Kong. The Fitch report makes no mention of the rapid development of the BRICS alliance and any impact that could have on the mighty dollar, but they don't need to. Their report provides mountains of data to reinforce what we all instinctively know. America, like most of the Western world, is living beyond its means, and the gap between income and expenditure is growing rapidly. Think of all the election promises that will be made in the run-up to the 2024 election. It's possible that both leading candidates will be campaigning from behind bars, which can't be a good look from the point of view of the creditworthiness of US bonds. If Joe is allowed to retire to the care home, he could be replaced by California Governor Gavin Newsom. That's a state that's thinking of giving $6 million to every person of color in the state as compensation for the slavery that their ancestors experienced generations ago. Does that sound like a recipe for a new responsible approach to fiscal management? One voice of sanity is House Budget Chairman Jody Arrington, who responded to the Fitch downgrade by saying, with annual deficits projected to double and interest costs expected to triple in just 10 years, our nation's financial health is rapidly deteriorating and our debt trajectory is completely unsustainable. 
This is a wake up call to get our fiscal house in order before it's too late. The House Budget Committee's response sums up the situation pretty well for America, but you could substitute the name of any Western democracy and make the same observation. They said, we need responsible leaders with the political courage to rein in Washington's spending addiction, return to policies that strengthen our economy and reduce our national debt. A public debt is a public curse. It's time for political courage to save the country and our children's future and reverse the curse. I'll see you next time.